up guys, Captain Arya from the eSports Club here, here with some pretty awesome news. Now as you probably know, we've been running the WD Black TEC League for Rainbow Six Siege powered by LG Ultra Gear for the past few months. As we come into August with our final season of the league, we wanted to celebrate with you guys who have made this an amazing experience and an extremely successful eSports event. We've teamed up with some of our favorite partners to give away an entire eSports PC for one lucky viewer. Yes, one of you is going to take home a complete PC featuring some of these awesome parts. First up, we've got the LG Ultra Gear 27GL 650F gaming monitor, 27 inch, 144Hz, 1ms with an IPS panel to make sure you're at the top of your eSports game without sacrificing picture quality. Then we've got an amazing lineup of accessories coming in from HyperX to make sure that you're always on top of your game. The Cloud Stinger Core Gaming Headset. For the keyboard, you've got the awesome HyperX Alloy FPS RGB Mechanical Keyboard. Then your mouse is the HyperX Pulsefire Surge. It's got a brilliant RGB all around the mouse. For the mouse pad, you've got the HyperX Fury S that is the speed edition of the extended mouse pad and then of course for your memory you've got the HyperX Fury RGB RAM you've got 16 gigs at 3400 megahertz next up we've got the WD Blue SN 550 NVMe SSD to make sure you're spending as little time loading and booting up and spend more time gaming and then of course at the heart of this PC is the Ryzen 5 3600X CPU now, as you know it, at the heart of every gaming PC is a great GPU. So we've teamed up with Zotac Gaming to give you a brand new RTX 2060 because frames win games and there should be nothing between you and top of the line performance. Next up, we've teamed up with NZXT who makes some of the best and most premium PC components on the market. Powering your PC is going to be the C850 fully modular power supply and your cooling solutions are going to be taking care of the Kraken X63 all-in-one liquid cooler. Now we wanted to make this PC something truly special and while the NZXT H510 Elite is a great cabinet for anyone, it wasn't enough. We teamed up with NZXT to give the winner of this giveaway a brand new NZXT H510 Siege Edition cabinet. This is a limited edition licensed Rainbow Six Siege themed cabinet from NZXT. There are only 500 of these in the world and just a handful coming to India. The side panels of this cabinet are themed in the wall and door reinforcement designs from Rainbow Six Siege and there is an illuminated six icon on the front panel along with a six icon charm and a puck in the signature breach charge design which is only available with the H510 Siege. And one lucky winner on this giveaway is going to get a full eSports PC sitting inside this beautiful cabinet. Now that you know everything that there is in the giveaway, the question is how you can take part. Well, it's fairly simple. First, head on to the link in the description of this video. Once you're at the giveaway landing page, fill out your details and follow the instructions. First, head on over to Facebook, make sure you're following us. Two, make sure you're following the eSports Club on Instagram. And three, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Simple so far. Now the interesting part. In a one minute video on Instagram, tell us why you deserve this epic new PC from the eSports Club and all our partners. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully, use the right hashtags, tag the right accounts, and you can be one step closer to winning this epic setup. Now that's it guys, just a little bit of work and you can be one step closer to getting yourself your dream PC. I'm Captain Arya and this is the Esports Club and we hope to see you in our next tournament. The moment of creation is a form of magic where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one then another, and another, until, deep in the complexity, you discover order, speed, reliability, power, experience the WD Black MVME SSD. Fueled by 2.0.
darkness. Level up to NVMe SSD performance. Ready to breach. Go, go, go! Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WB Black Esports Club League for Amber Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear, in association with Daisy Founder Zotai Gaming and Games The Shop. I'm your host, Blackjack. Joining me is my co-host and analyst, Baba Gusta, and our admin, Mr. Reborn, as we are here for the final day of Division 2 in the entirety of the league. That is right, Division 2 in Season 5, and of course, in the entirety of the WD Black Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege is finishing up today ladies and gentlemen and what a way to send it off as we are going to begin with team moha versus instinct esports at least on the first half of today we were supposed to begin with oh yeah and vector sports but due to complications with the stream and delays being caused as a result of that that match has been shifted offline so to be updated with the scores that are going to happen that are going to be released when that match ends whenever it does that is Make sure to follow us, the Esports Club, at the mm, at Facebook and Instagram for the stories when they come out. Speaking of our socials, make sure to follow, check out the socials of the Esports Club on Facebook and Instagram for the giveaway of a limited edition Rainbow Six Siege PC featuring a Siege themed PC cabinet by NZXT. There's only 500 of these machines around the world, and if you want to have a chance to win one for yourselves, check out the Esports Club on Instagram and Facebook. For details on how to enter yourselves into this giveaway. All of the uh, plugging aside, ladies and gentlemen, it is another bittersweet day 
as is this entire week because we are about to bid goodbye to the league the league that has been with us for the last five months is finally about to end and right now division two is going to end tonight with the first game of first stream game being between instinct esports and team waha on the map of villa we're just waiting on instinct esports to join in into the lobby itself hopefully very very soon but more on this match from our analyst analyst over at the analyst desk bob agusta baba the mic is yours well, Jack, definitely is going to be interesting indeed. Instinct Esports going up against Team Moha. Currently, Instinct Esports standing is at 6th place. As well as on Team Moha, we actually did see them defeating uh, Back to Esports 8-6 to six on map consulate. That was definitely a huge... Uh, major upset coming in from the knowing for the fact that our dear viewers actually did voted on the instagram post saying that battle peace post was going to win against uh, moha i believe it was 70 uh, percent on the favor of battle peace post and 30 percent uh, favored on the side of team moha and looks like uh, team moha did not upset them at all eight to six on map consulate definitely a huge punch in the gut for battle esports but uh, to be quite uh, fair Team Moha is definitely not out of the game just yet. Fourth place, it's actually good because they have a lesser chances of being relegated into this division too. Now, coming back to their, uh, you know, win-loss uh, statistics, they have won two matches and lost four of them. Two, I believe they have won against uh, uh, Mavex, 7-3. So that would be Team Moha. And the second match, I believe they... Uh, Mm, they actually did win. Yep, yeah, the first one was actually winning against Team Havoc seven to three on week two, and Team Moha eight to six against Bad Trip Esports. A really good. Uh, you know, they had a little bit of bumps and bruises in the beginning, but I'm glad they did uh, pick it back up. Coming back to Instinct Esports, uh, they're also quite doing the same. The only problem is they have a higher chances of being relegated here. Sixth, uh, sixth position. 2-4, to four, winning uh, only two matches, one against Team Area 69, 6-8 on Mac Cafe Dostoyevsky. We actually did see them, uh, you know, putting the match on going to overtime, which is really interesting to see. And uh, it was already on week one match in, uh, indeed, 7-2 to two against Team Havocs, winning on Map Cafe Dostoyevsky. So definitely going uh, looking by these two teams they have the same statistics the only problem is the standings team moha on fourth place and instinct esports on sixth place uh, well we'll get to see if there are any changes coming in from the standings indies as i'm going to progress in the community votes uh, we're going to be seeing um hmm, let's give me a sec uh, um yeah i believe it is yeah team moha on 47 percent where on the side of team instinct esports it is 53 percent looks like uh, it's a little bit on the edge instead we're going to be seeing uh, you know the numbers still favor on the side of instinct esports but there are still viewers who actually think that team moha is going to win against them so definitely uh, we'll get to see that in this specific matchup indeed and the map is going to be on villa Absolutely. Thank you for that brilliant analysis of the game, Baba, as we are indeed here on the band phase on the map of Villa in this match between Instinct Esports and Team Moha. And starting on the band phase, we're going to see a fairly standard set of bands come out. No big deals right there. The Thatcher is off the board. EMPs, Breach Charges, and or Claymores really depends on what the player and the team wants. And of course, a brilliant selection of guns between the AR-33, L85, A2, the P226, and of course, the Shotgun Primary. A very good set of weapons that the Thatcher has, and that's why he's going to be taken off the board, while the Montane will be the second ban on the map. Once again, a standard ban, Montane pushes in competitive Rainbow Six, I think we've seen quite a lot of those, especially in recent days, but Montaigne has been one of the more terrifying operators, attackers that is, um, in Rainbow Six history. Mira will face the band wave as well. Villa, Mira, we've seen many strats regarding, uh, or surrounding, excuse me, the Mira in this map. So, once again, no surprises seeing the Mira being taken off the board. I'm actually kind of curious to see if Ubisoft will ever get around to nerfing Mira, seeing as she has a ridiculous ban rate in uh, competitive and, of course, higher ranked Siege, which is 64% as of the statistics released in year 5 season 
And up till date, I believe Mira actually has not had any significant nerfs. If anything, going into year five, season three, she's going to get a bit of a buff because her vector gets the 1.5 X. Mira, three armor with a 1.5 X scope on a vector. That is going to be a terrifying operator to go up against. So who, who knows? Hopefully we'll get to see some sort of uh, nerf coming into her soon. Because uh, the rate she's getting banned, wi uh, banned on, excuse me, and of course the amount of utility she brings out, it's it's a lot, man. It is definitely a lot. However, right now, aside from the meter, of course, the Kaid is a, has been, of course, banned, and no surprises once again. Kaid, although a little bit more interesting than maybe say the standard Echo Maestro bands or the Valkyrie band for that matter, as we can see, Mellow playing the Valkyrie. The Kaid ban is an interesting one because that is electrical utility and denial from the side of the defenders that is no longer in play. That is a ban from Team Moha as well. They are the ones who decided to ban Kaid, not Instinct Esports. It's the defenders who have taken out the Kaid. So one or two, one of two things could have happened. One, they really don't want to play Kaid and play against Kaid when they go to the attack on round seven roll swap. Or two, they Attackers want to play the Echo Maestro Foul at, in, in some capacity, or maybe, excuse me, or maybe all together at some point in the round, and that's why they've taken up the Kaid. It, it could be one of two situations, and uh, of course, some might say that in that case, why ban the Kaid? You could ban Clash because uh, not a lot of people tend to use Clash anyway. But uh, it's really down to the way. It want to play around with their operators and op bands and experimenting with bands and coming up with different strategies is one of the reasons competitive rainbow six is so intriguing and interesting to watch and cast of course speaking of competitive rainbow six and of course the match at hand let's have a quick look at both of the rosters that are here in the lobby for our teams today from the side of instinct esports we've got asterix pen drive and akonda kurosaki and invalid and from the third team waha we've got nexus dhanu or not dhanu these days the prodigy mellow and no skill shots are already being fired there's a blackbeard on the 90 hallway window but uh, he's just trying to break some utility or, I don't know, maybe he saw an operator over there. There is somebody playing very close. That is the Goyo Nexus. There's a drone that has spotted him. He's got to be careful on this Attackers run around that he's trying to make. I don't think he knows where exactly that drone is. That's why he's just going to have to fall back. As the drone on the shelf that we saw right behind the smoke at least. That is no skill on the main 90 hallway. Or just at the front of the 90 hallway. Uh, the shelf behind him is where there is a drone. So... That's somewhere that the attackers have to be careful of. Nexus has taken over the Vulcan shield up ahead. As oh, that's unfortunate. The Valkyrie tried to peek on the stairs. Unfortunately, was taken out. And Kurosaki will get a double off of that. A big drop comes in as the Sledge has made his way into landing on the main stairs. Uh, broken down a Vulcan shield. He's going to have to face the smoke next. Has no skills coming up close. But Tanu gets taken down. Kurosaki gets a double. And he walks in and he somehow gets a fourth. What is happening? The sledge just comes in and rocks the side of uh, rocks the side of Team Moha completely, and Invalid will be the one to shut down the Jaeger, taking away the Ace from the sledge. How was the sledge allowed to just walk up the stairs, get two kills, blow a Vulcan shield, take another on Vault? Those three are fine, like, you can get those kills no sweat, but then he breached the wall, the hallway wall, classical hallway wall, into game's room side, still gets the kill onto smoke. How does that happen? I am so... <laughs> That's a bamboozled play right there, no skill, I'm not sure what happened with him, but, of course, um, after that quad kill, and after the finish off by Invalid, we're gonna see Av Aviator Games be attempted once again uh, from the side of the defense, as they did lose round one, and it is one to zero, going into round two for Instinct Esports. Well, I actually do, do want to actually say one Attack thing. It was basically kind of similar to how Anakin just enters into the scene and just he says hello there. He just arrived just and just took out both Baba, for all of the four. Yep. I think you mean Obi Wan. Well, I yes, I do have to apologize that I haven't watched the entire series of Star Wars. Like I've watched the latest Bob versions of it so yes i do have to apologize for that obi-wan mm -hmm. kenobi right yep all right obi-wan kenobi yes yep i still remember those scenes when he uh, starts saying uh, it's over anakin i've got the high ground i mean that's basically the same thing exactly what happened to kurosaki he actually did get four kills uh, in his hand unfortunately we didn't get to see his ace coming in because uh, invalid the bb the rifle shield 
uh, he is going to steal his ace away from him but uh, a really yeah, wonderful start out. coming in from instant he's supposed to be quite frank that was quite an early round indeed and uh, with that a uh, strong start from the attack because the steam has absolutely zero idea on what to do about it this time uh, on the round second they are definitely making sure that they won't be able to do the same mistakes again that if we are going to be seeing a rotation coming in from the game group so that the defenders might be able to you know rotate quickly from the 90s all without having any problems or you can just hold the angle instead of you know uh, most of the attackers would actually hold the angle from the door but that rotation that he's been making in it would cause a little bit of you know advantageous opportunity for the defenders. So we're seeing the attackers already pushing in from the bathrooms and a Conda pen drive and I believe that is uh, Asterix uh, who's going to be clearing out the sites from Statuary and Trophy Room as they're going to be slowly progressing in and actually sees the Jaeger pushes in and confirms it. Asterix with the first flag eliminating the, the Prodigy. Make that two as... Uh, no, yeah, actually it doesn't. Melo will be the one who's going to shut down. One of the important operators indeed and that is Pendrive. We actually see Pendrive... Uh, we actually did see Pender make a lot of plays uh, from uh, the week 2 and week 1 but sadly we are not going to be able to see this place coming in. C4 comes in, he's going to take two of them. Nexus with the C4 plays eliminating two of the important operators on the side of Inkstreet Esports. That would give them the breathing room indeed. Nexus on the other hand using his vector to try to contest the black bear but it would be wise for him to just fall back wait for the attackers to push in at that time they can be able to trap him at a good position well, like thanks to a, lo a lot of utilities from smoke's gas canisters and goyo's vulcan shield they can be able to counter any push coming in from the attackers now for the attackers they have quite a lot of time but not more man count and nexus with the triple kill eliminating invalid but kurosaki we actually did make a wonderful place from round one will he be able to make up again as he actually gets one kill eliminating Melo. Still needs to find three more. And Goyo, I believe he's on the stairs holding an angle from the 90s hallway. Kurosaki slowly pushing in. He has the frag grenades, but he doesn't have the exact intel on where the ADS's location are in. So he's going to trust on his gunplay issues. Knows that there is one from the vault. Will be able to take the head indeed. A double kill coming in from Kurosaki as the instant frag comes in from no skill with the SMG 11. As Team Waha will win their first round round on defense on second floor AVG a wonderful display on how defense are made especially the Romas with that incredible C4 and with that we're going to be progressing to round three round three is underway and the early game equalizer is in not that it's a uh, hopefully you know not that it matters much because the equalizer in the early game can lead to a whole host of situations and uh, you know usually a one-to-one -one score is not indicative of a whole lot hopefully uh, we will still get to see a back and forth between both of these teams as they're looking to close out their time here in the wd black these was probably for rainbow six siege with a bang but that is a question that we will get to find out over the course of this match, over the course of this night, as, of course, there's two other fantastic games after this one. But we'll get to that after, at the end, excuse me, of this game. As of right now, it is round three, spot. and we are headed to second floor trophy. Standard side rotation right here from the side of Team Moaha. No surprises, seeing as we've... Excuse me, right there. We've seen these, uh, we've seen Trophy come out as soon as uh, a, a team wins AVG, or even if they lose AVG a couple of times, they go to Trophy or they go to Dining, but most, 90% uh, of the time, it's straight into Trophy with an extended hold onto into Bedroom through statutory with a road team that we'll see for right now. Ten seconds Round 3 is going to be fairly interesting because uh, both teams are still playing for Five the victory. They want to make sure that they leave the league with a smile on their faces with Attackers after having had a good, a fun time. And that, of course, is what it all comes down to. That, uh, you know, there's prizes and there's... Uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Prodigy. Mm -mm. That internet is not is not Prodigy. Oh, that internet, internet, excuse me, is not prodigal. Not in the slightest. He's moonwalking. Then we're going to walk right by him. And any second now, the Jaeger will be out there. He goes. He's gone, ladies and gentlemen. He is out of here. As, um, I do apologize. That's just a little bit of a joke. 
But at the end of the day, that is a big issue for the Moa. They just lost one, they might just lose two. No! The Sledge could not react in time to Melo peeking around the shield. And Melo with a double takes on Kurosaki and Anaconda and swings the man down very heavily in favor of the defenders. There's Nexus with a C4 as he takes down Invalid. In the meanwhile, Dhanu was dropped. Prodigy has returned only to see his team 3-2 to two up in the man count right now as uh, it's all down to pen drive and asterisk. The last two standing to try and make this play work for their team. Shots are going to be fine to open up those barricades, but how much will that do as uh, there may yet be a C4? No, the Valkyrie actually does not have one, but Mute does, and he's waiting in the wings down below. Intel is going to be king right now because if Instinct Esports' attackers are unaware of where the defenders are positioned, excuse me, they might not have a great time. No skill. He's trying to rotate around, catch the Ash off guard. The Ash is doing the exact same thing, but no skill is actually going to pull back up Astronomy wow, Stairs and combat that. against the other attacker, that is Sophia. Shots are being traded. Information is being traded as Zofia sits outside of the Fox window, inside of the Fox window for that matter, in the connecting room between a Classical Hallway and Sight. The Warriors pack will be exactly. snow not seen as the Zofia goes down, and there goes another Mellow with the final kill of the round. And that was a very unfortunate drop from the side of Instinct Esports. They are looking a little, a little shaky right now, especially after that brilliant first round that came out from Kurosaki. They've lost two. AVG and Trophy have gone to the side of Instinct, and Moha are, uh, yeah, they're not looking too great, at least not in these two rounds. Again, it's the early game. Things are bound to change. It is Division 2 after all. But how much will they change is the question at hand. We're going to be heading to Dining Room in Round 3. And the match is only getting started. Well, 2-1 to one in favor of Team One. Excellent defense being displayed here on the side of the defenders. Especially Melo with those two incredible kills. One from the... One from the actually, it wasn't one, it was both uh, on the master bedroom Attack window, giving them the opportunity to get those important kills. Uh, gave uh, Team Moha the, the entire control of master bedroom. With that, as we're going to be progressing to round four. First floor dining is going to be the site here now. According to this specific side, we actually did see, you know, most of the win actually goes to the favor of the attackers in the way how the push comes in. The only changes uh, that we are going to be seeing is the execution side on how well that they're going to execute. Unless and until if, uh, uh, for an example, if the, attack, the attackers try to push in from the laundry and open up the wall, at the side of execution time, the defenders has a, some necessary utilities like the smoke gas, gas canisters or the nitro C4 to eliminate these important operators, especially when they're trying to push. Team Moha might have that perfect opportunity to win the specific round, unless and until if Instinct Esports exhaust those utilities and when they try to push in, they can be able to win from gunplay. That's where the attack is going to indeed. It's kind of like a 50-50. Uh, like we absolutely have zero idea on who's going to be winning on this specific side as we're going to be seeing no skill playing also very close from the bicycle storage goes for the uh speak right from outside and invalid is going to take care of it not for now though but uh, no skill will definitely fall back instead knowing the fact that it would be better to not get early frag out at the beginning of the round it would be best for the mute to play close quarter combat with his devastating shotgun and the c4 whenever if there is a certain operator is trying to go for the plant indeed attackers have located a coming in from the attackers as not done is going to be using his impact need to open up the hatches on the side of the bedroom and I believe that is the Ashes Breachy Charge being used to establish a very long angle indeed from the dining as well as we're going to be seeing Melo with another important kill indeed. Invalid is off the board, but Pendra will be there to shut down his aggressive plays. Meanwhile, we're going to be seeing no skill, quite a decrease, quite a lot of health, but Kurosaki, he is angry indeed. Getting those important kills, eliminating Nexus off the board, that would give them a lot of opportunities for the attackers to push in from the first floor dining group. No skin will be able to from the drone as Anaconda also finds another one indeed the prodigy look at that 
cracks from above as now Dunu takes out two of the important operators. All he had to do was vault from the trophy room and get those important kills. Bush comes in as Kurosaki claims the life of no skill. And with that, now Dunu is all by himself. We actually did see him make great amount of plays. The push comes in and look at that. A great kill. But in the end, Anaconda will be there to shut him down. That was actually a trade coming in from both of them. A really well player coming in from Instinct Esports as they're going to be winning their second round on attack on round four, first floor dining room. And just like I said, round five will be in play and I believe second floor Aviator is going to be the play. We're going to be going back to second floor AVG right now from the side of Moaha's defense. As dining room didn't quite work out for them, Dhanu tried to bring out the play, making the vault happen from above in statutory. And while he did drop the diffuser and get an extra kill off of that, it wasn't quite enough for him or his team because he needed to get two more, a quad kill, which would have given the side of Moaha the round and kept their lead afloat. Unfortunately for them, it has not. That is why we're seeing a 2-2 two to -two equalizer and the side change to AVG from the side of Team Moaha. Even though the side change to AVG would have happened if they won they downstairs can. as well, the big difference would have been that Instinct would have been under a lot more pressure. Mind you, the rounds are coming pretty close. They are coming fairly close between these two teams. It's always down, almost always down to a 1v1 or a 2v1 or something to that extent. And it almost always works out, but not quite. That's what we've uh, gotten to see, and that is the... Uh, it's pretty much the history in these first five, four rounds that have gone by. Round five, let's see if it brings out, uh, brings in something any different for us. As once again, there's an extended hold into study room that's coming up from the side of Moha's defense. You can see they made two rotates, one into a leader and one into the game room. Both of them, of course, lead into the study room. It's also good for holding from wind side of vault, especially the aviator angle. If there's a shield next to vault, that's a pretty safe angle to peek, at least until aviator gets compromised. That's when aviator or games room really, either one gets compromised. That's when you have to move off the peak on the study and move into more pressing matters. However, well, one could argue if the site's already been taken over, then the last remaining defender inside of vault might as well already be dead. And that is uh, certainly the case in most situations, but again, this is Rainbow Six Siege, most situations, until it's all situations, is not a set in stone situation. Pender, however, will make no skill set set in stone, and get another one off of that too. Nexus drops, and that's a couple of very, very big drops right there from the side of Team Moha. They have just lost the smoke and the Goyo, the Vector, and the SMG-11, along with, of course, the shotgun of the smoke, most importantly, the gas canisters. A That's a lot of area denial, a lot of time denial that has been taken away from the side of the attack. But he doesn't know that there's Zofi playing close. He does now, and they will take that kill. Pen drive goes down as the bandit has taken a refrag on one. We find another no, the Quantum Shield's been popped. He's so low on HP, and he'll be taken out. The refrag is in, the kills are in, but there's the Jaeger to take that Asterix as well. Another kill's taken for him. Will he find another? Yes, the World Prodigy comes in with a couple, and now it is uh, Anaconda versus Anaconda Kurosaki versus Melo and the Prodigy. They've got plenty of time remaining, both sides right now. Minute and 20 in their hands as they're trying to make the push to site a, a, a reality, excuse me, right there. There's uh, Anaconda, the buck, holding down onto the study room angle while Mello is holding from landing through to study room and a little bit of the rotate into games room, although it's not a huge angle. Games room is pretty much up for the taking, but the main problem right now is the fact that Diffuser is not in the attacker's hands. They need to secure the Diffuser first and foremost. Now that they know that where these defenders are sitting, <clears throat> excuse me, they're, they're going to have to try and make a break for them. Skeleton keys out. Will he find somebody? Not quite. Anaconda trying to make some plays happen. Ashasa going to be fine. Kurosaki is going to find Mello. The skeleton key does come out. And it will find the Prodigy as well. As Anaconda and Kurosaki finish off the side of Team Waha and give Instinct Esports round five, putting them back in the lead as they are now 3-2 up. Going into round six. And we're just one round away from the roll swap. Round six is in play and looks like a team Moaha has decided to go on second floor trophy room. I... 
knowing for the fact that they actually did uh, you know lose on AVG taking a different side would give them a better opportunity indeed as we're going to be seeing a six pick coming in the prodigy changing from the frost to the valkyrie it's actually kind of a uh, you know, it's it's more debatable on how powerful so Frost was when she was introduced into the game. Many people were kind of using using those Frost traps near at the windows or at the entrance. The Sometimes, uh, especially when they tried to, you know, plant at some specific locations, they would actually keep it hidden. But this time, uh, well, like, after quite a long time of playing Siege and also a huge uh, nerf uh, came in from Frost because all, uh, you know, for a primary gun, all it needs to just, uh, you know, I shoot three times to the frost trap to immediately uh, take it out because each and every time you, if you see a frost being played you need to be careful uh, you just have to you know check out the drones and look where exactly the frost trap is in she was, she was considered to be one of the most notorious operators when it comes to you know trapping one of the attack uh, operators and then you had you know uh, I just miss the old days dude I still remember when Kapkan was basically a you know one shot detonation of his EDD just eliminating one of them just like that if they don't you know be careful of those specific doors, but hey, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, that's it's a huge a lot of changes that we're going to be going to see even on both the sides on attackers as well as on defenders. So we're going to be progressing to round six. And looks like there's a lot of deployable shield being placed on the side of Team Waha here. One on the side of Red Stairs, uh, one on below from Red Stairs, and also one from the 90s hallway, in which we actually did see a Goyo shield being used from the previous round where Bandit was actually holding from that specific angle, taking out the Zofia. That was quite, uh, you know, it was quite, I, I was kind of, you know, scratching my head and thinking, you know, there is a Goyo shield uh, that can be, uh, the, that the attackers can be able to take it out. And even though he actually did get the first kill, the instant repack comes in on the side of attackers, but yeah, I'm not going to talk about more on the previous round. I'm just going to be focusing on round six. Indeed, no skill already low on HP on the AVG room. He definitely has to fall back. Indeed, as one of the nades uh, cooked from Kurosaki, he's going to be able to, you know, cook a nade right from the specific location where the defender's operator is going to be. And unfortunately, he won't be able to find one. Indeed, we're going to be seeing Bot uh, using his skeleton key to open up lines of sight right from below. As we're going to see one of the operators invalid downed. Out outside the veranda, the confirmation will definitely comes in from the Jaeger as he confirms the kill, knowing the fact that there is a diffuser being dropped on the leading room, or actually from outside the study room. With that, a lot of tensions being grouped in as one man advantage has been gone on the side of Team Instinct Esports as no skill. He's trying to contest the you know the breach from the AVG to making sure that he'll be able to get one important kill and I believe he does mellow with another kill and no skill also does the same pen drive will be able to take one which leads to only two operators left on the side of instant esports and they need to figure out a way to do something about it we actually did see uh, instant esports performing also very well on defense it's on attack winning those three important rounds will they be able to you know get a lead or will you be able to see team waha equalizing the round we'll actually get to see in this 53 seconds left of this specific Specific round here. Asterix uh, making sure that he would get the diffuser. I believe uh, the defender actually took care of the diffuser. And look at that, not Dhanu with the a perfect peak eliminating Asterix, which leads down to pen drive. The only operator remaining, he's currently in red stairs. He needs to worry about the 90 angle statuary room and also the specific side as well. Well, sad to see he won't be able to clutch it out indeed. Next is with the Vector SMG playing as the Goyo, eliminating the important operator on the side of Team East and East Coast, as we're going to be seeing both of these teams equalizing on first half as we're going to progress to round seven. Instinct Esports on defense. Let's see how well that, how well that they're going to be defending on Map Villa. 3-3 to three on the row swap, going into the defense for the side of Instinct Esports. That's pretty big right there. Even if Villa is an attacker side in map, Instinct managed to take three rounds when they really needed to. And going into the defense, 3-3 three, three means not only is it a row swap of the truest sense, where both teams are effectively starting from scratch, it's also going to be Instinct Esports... Uh, Sure, they don't have as much momentum as they would like going into round 7. They would have liked to win another round uh, and not lose round 6 to Moha. But unfortunately, they did. So their momentum has taken a little bit of a dent 
it's not completely stopped yet, which is what's going to make this round even more interesting. Because by yeah, winning out just one round, you haven't completely stopped case. any team that was winning it two rounds, three rounds back to back. All you've done is halt them just for a little bit. It's more like a stop gap, if anything. And uh, the momentum can be resumed as soon as possible from instant esports. That will be that is what they'll be looking to do. While Moha are going to be looking to make sure that their attack goes as flawlessly as possible. Because they want to make sure that, uh, again, they don't have any problems getting into sight. They don't have any problems taking down the roamers. They don't have any problems getting the plant off or finishing off in all the kills. With all the kills between the, uh, for themselves onto the side of the esports. Attackers are moving to defeat the bomb. Action phase is underway as a team Moha are now going to be in the map. Not just droning, of course, they're going to be in the map, making sure that they have everything in place. And uh, Kurosaki, he's going to bring down those uh, ADSs. A little late to put them all down, but since he's mostly putting them down inside a site, no problems once again. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Maybe the Jaeger's going to hold 90 this time. I'm not entirely certain if uh, Kurosaki intends to do that. He might just be able to, and he might just have to. No, he's pulled all the way to the side of King, uh, to the side of Trophy Room instead. As the Doc is going for a long peek onto the study window. Will he find one? No, the Zofia sees him first. And that was a brilliant call-up coming in as Melo was aware of that angle being used. As Nexus takes one more. There goes the Jaeger, but Invalid's here to take a refrag onto one. Tanu goes down, and Invalid will rotate all the way down to the basement to make sure that he does not get taken out. Slowly but surely, time is ticking away for the side of Instinct. For the side of Team Moha. Although a minute and 55 seconds is quite a lot of time. They don't have to worry about it too much as uh, they can just take out those utilities and make the push onto site slowly but surely spot those uh, cameras and those hidden utility bits and pieces along with the iq that is no skill bring out the red scanner there we go as uh, c4 is being prepared by invalid now that is on landing and i think he might want to have that replaced he is dropped. going to keep that matter as nexus is taking a bit of damage but shots are being fired and no skill is going to be the a one to take down invalid in. that's the valkyrie down below who got taken down by the iq smart use of the iq rd scanner right there from no skill as he went down to take that kill along with of course the call from his team is that there may yet be somebody roaming down below Minute and six seconds remaining for the side of Team Waha. They are up by 4-2 on the man count. But in Sync Esports, you can see they're not willing to let up on the aggression. Both the Bandit and the Mute. Mute, of course, in a more passive position than the Bandit, who is currently playing inside a study room. Somehow avoiding all of the shots that are being fired towards him, while the attackers are just looking for ways to push into sight. Hibana pellets are going to come out. Asterix is not going to be taking them down, but it doesn't matter. The Zofia will take them down instead. As now it's a 1v4. And Anaconda is one, one misclick away from blowing himself up. He's got to be very careful right now as he holds down in games room. Diffuser plant goes off in the meanwhile. And now it's a post-plant situation for Anaconda. The Mute stuck inside a games room against four very hungry attackers. A little bit of damage is done to him as he's trying to play around this situation. That he's found himself and he won't be able to. And there is Mello once again to take the kill. On to the last remaining defender as Moha are going to be taking away the momentum from Instinct Esports now. Winning round 7 on 2nd floor AVG. And Instinct Esports are, uh, yeah, they're now once again not in the lead. They're in the deficit. Moha are back in the lead 4-3 to them. That was an impressive attack coming in from Team Moha, eliminating, getting those two early frags, Pendrive and Kurosaki, giving them, the attackers, a wonderful opportunity to not worry about the roaming capabilities. Also, how can I not forget about No Skill, who was actually tracking Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie's uh, exact moments. Uh, if... Uh, if we did, however, uh, if we didn't, however, actually get to see uh, the IQ eliminating Valk, it would have been a different scenario. Nonetheless, uh, round eight will be in play, and uh, second floor AVG is going to be the site yet again. This time, we're going to be seeing a change of operators. We have uh, Pendrive playing the as the Vigil instead of playing as the Dock, as Kurosaki will be playing as the Dock instead of the Jaeger, in which we are going to be seeing Asterix playing as the Jaeger instead. I mean, it is quite one of the most important operators to be playing with the Jaeger and the Mike combo. And I believe 
I, I just kind of uh, realized what the ba what are the operators' ban phases. Uh, I guess it was yeah, it was Mira and Kaid, which would give the defenders an opportunity to either pick the Echo. I mean, you do know that Echo is considered to be one of the most important operators to wasting a lot of time. He is the only operator that can be able to disorient a plant coming in from the defenders. Wait a minute, I just kind of realized it does Ella's uh, Grismoth mine will be able to disorient a player. That's actually kind of interesting. Maybe I'll. Uh, Definitely check it out in my custom games where I play all by myself and if I actually... No, no, actually it's actually quite best if I just head on to quick match and uh, experiment it to know whether it actually works or not. Anyways, around 8 in play, second floor AVG is in sight and the Prodigy playing as the Hard Breacher. We have one of the Hard Breachers, uh, the Hibana, very quiet important indeed. She can be able to open up the walls on the side of study room. The only problem is at which angle she's going to be opening it up on. Maybe she can be open it, uh, opening it on the games room or on the aviator room. It's up to her preference because uh, most probably we actually do see a Hibana's uh, you know, pellets being used on the side of games room so that they can be able to get a pro the proper access and make sure that they can be able to go for the default pattern just as they can which is in fact is near on the vault room a lot of utilities being wasted from Melo as she uses her case so your lifeline concussive need to make sure that she can be able to you know exhaust any of the ADS being used right from the main stairs when we're seeing a flashbang being thrown out confirming that it's been exhausted and it's going to be a moment of time where the Sophia uses her uh, grenade to push in there you go the push comes in from the attackers and it's a heavy push indeed Con getting the important controls on the side of the study room as now Danu is already in the only operator and he needs to be careful as c4 tosses out a grave mistake indeed as it as that actually always uh, i mean it always took out the barbed wire which gives the attackers the opportunity to easily push in without having any problems as well kurosaki and penta both playing on the side of vault and the games room as we're going to be seeing nexus eliminating invalid that is the first frag coming in on the side of team moana they're getting those important early frags indeed which would, give, which would give the attackers an opportunity to get control and push in and looks like nexus is going to accidentally tk Melo. that is not going to work out well but prodigy prodigy is here to eliminate one of the important operators making it a, a man advantage on the side of team Waha. With that, an important push comes in and looks like not Danu has already secured on the side of study room, but Asterix will be there from the red stairs to eliminate not Danu. She needs to be careful on the 90 angle because there is a nomad as he she as she's going to fall back indeed, but won't be able to see the Hibana playing in from the AVG room as Prodigy gets a double kill. Push comes in as Andaconda and Kurosaki, the only two operators left on the side of Instant Esports. The plans coming in, they don't have the C4. In fact, Andaconda will be able to eliminate Prodigy, but at what cost? No skill. Actually, she actually uh, uh, steps out from the plant as Nomad comes in for the push, trying to provide support, and she will indeed. The plant has to go in at this specific time, and just like that, it will be a post plant situation coming in from the attackers as Instinct Esports, uh, aka Kurosaki, needs to figure this one out. One will be definitely going for a long prank from 90 hallway, and another one will be holding the angle from the red stairs. The dog, he only has 30 seconds left, he either has to bait. Uh, from going for the counter recruits, but does he know that there is a higher flank coming in as uh, one of the operators Nexus is already pushing in from the 90s all the way. He's currently in the AVG room near the bar. Push comes in. He actually won't be able to see the dog as Kurosaki eliminates Nexus, but at what cost? He only has 10 or 12 seconds. 10 seconds left. He will be able to go for the bait yet again. He actually takes the head off, but does it, it, does it work out? He only has 6 seconds. Only time will tell. Well, no, it does not. Team Moaha, even though with a great clutch coming in from the dock, uh, sad to say that Kurosaki didn't have enough amount of time as the attackers will win their attack rounds yet again as Team Moaha winning 8th round. Two wins in attack indeed as we're going to be progressing to round 9. Round 9 is in play and that was very, very unfortunate for Kurosaki. The man has been very influential for his team today, Unfor but not for him not for him to win that round that time. The 1v2 was done, but by the time it was, the diffuser had gone past the point of no return. Round 9 is now underway, or will be underway, as we're going to be heading to Trophy Room and Statutory, and the buck will be six-pick out into the Jackal by Not Dhanu. 
Bringing in the Spaniard, of course, the unbanned Spaniard in this map, which is the Jackal. He's going to be making sure to track those... Um, Defenders, protect your track those footprints as best as he can. That's a lot of intel that the attackers could definitely use. Moaha are aware of that, and that is why they are bringing in the Jackal to play. Meanwhile, I see the lack of a castle, so that indicates to me that they are not going to be going for any sort of extended castle holes inside a bedroom or maybe even inside of a landing. Though the landing hold will still happen with the shield, but if I was going to put the shield down on the left side and not the right, that's going to allow him to peek into 90 hallway as well instead of the main stairs, but that leaves his main stairs like in a bit of a spot. So, you know, the way that that area works is that either side you pick, it leaves you in a bit of a blind spot. So, and putting the shield in the middle, not exactly the best place to put it, because then you're just exposed from two sides. So, you know, it's, it's going to have to be the left or the right side, and one side... Putting the shield down on one side means you're stuck blind on the other side. So you need some help from other defenders. That could be Anaconda, that could be Pendrive. As Instant Esports are now two rounds down in the deficit. And 5-3 is the scoreline going into round 9. Pendrive playing all the way down below by the main door of Villa. Is going to be one of the more crucial operators in this situation. Unless, of course, he gets taken out early. In which case, Team Maha can do the side of relief. And uh, make sure that uh, they're not taken out by Roman. You know, oh, 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 no skill. He does not know how close he got right there to taking down Asterix. Because, of course, enemies uh, do not have outlines on on a, on your own screen uh, that would be that would be that would be illegal to do so you know so um that's uh, let's just hope that that ain't the case at all it, it isn't of course i'm sure as no skill he's just uh, busy making sure the utilities from the side of the defense are denied as well as possible so that the prodigy that is the hibana can get in and make a breach happen the attacker's bomb diffuser has got a bit of a punch hole angle on the assembly stairs right now. I'm going to see the drone that comes up from there, though. As Nexus with the AK-74 is trying to make some uh, vertical lines of sight to contest these attack these defenders from. It's a little quiet. Minute 30 in the round and it's a little quiet between both teams. The only shots that we're hearing is uh, of angles being set up. Drones coming in that are being taken out by the defenders. And that's about it. Slowly but surely, we're start, we'll start to see more and more action come out between both these teams as there is, in fact, a push coming in from the bedroom area and from the astronomy window. The trap is there. He's trying to fast peek against the dock, but Kurosaki pre-firing that, of course, gives away his chance at getting a kill from there. Shots were fired as Anaconda is now low on HP, but the Jackal then will be spotted and Kurosaki takes one, will he find another? That's Zofia, who is now low on HP. Melo, he's got to be careful on these gunfights right now as there is... Evil eyes are doing a bit of damage as well. Mello's is still gonna find one. That's Pender on the world for Kurosaki against double. Gets a triple onto Mello and no skill. And suddenly the man has swung the favor in, swung the ties in the favor of the defense, but not quite. As a reflex in, probably takes down Asterix. Three versus two right now. As uh, man count close to being equalized. The push comes in. The Nomad does not see the dock in time. That's a quad for the dock. And now he's gonna heal up and a condo. Shot's gonna be fired from inside a bedroom. But Prodigy, he was a little unfortunately unable to confirm that kill. Shots are gonna be fired. Will this be the ace? It will! Kurosaki comes out with a crucial clutch ace for his team exactly when they needed it. That is gonna put them one round away from equalizing, having won round nine on second floor trophy against Moha's attack. They will put them on four to five, up from three to five. They now need one round to equalize and make this game even more exciting. As we're going to be heading into round 10, and looks like it is on AVG, Aviator and Games Room, that is, uh, from the side of Instinct Esports. Well, round 10 is in play. 4-5 to five is the scoreline favoring on the side of Team Moha here. And for Team Moha, all they have to do is win two rounds so that they can secure the win against Instinct Esports. But the same thing goes back to Instinct Esports as well. The only question is, will we be able to see overtime... Well, we actually get to see it on round 11 instead. I mean, not in round 10, we we actually have to get to see if the score on both of these sides, instant esports, may can be able to equalize the round. But we'll get to see it. Prep phase will be in second floor. AVG is going to be the site and invalid the man 
with the ace. Never mind, that was Kurosaki with the ace. I do have to apologize with it. A lovely ace coming in from Kurosaki, and he as he's going to be sticking it to the dog. A really great operator with the MP5 ACOG side. What the foregrip and a flash hider attachment definitely does the job, but. Uh, Will it happen on the next update though? I'm really quite curious because uh, I still remember that the dog doesn't have a uh, 2.0 magnification, I believe. He only has uh, a 1.0 and a 1.5 magnification. Like, I, I just haven't played the TTS yet. I am so hyped up that I actually wanted to play the game on live event instead. Yes. Yes, I actually do wanted to play the game on live event. I do have to apologize for it. But hey, actually, uh, enough of that. Let's just head on in. Action phase. We're going to be seeing a rotation being made on the side of Anaconda using his shotgun to provide great amount of you know movement for the defender so that they can be able to go you know get in on the 90s all without having any problems to contest from the 90 angle instead which is quite great we're going to be seeing not done with the skeleton key opening up the barricades uh, which is currently being situated from the astronomy window as the site is on avg i believe the attackers will try to make sure that they would get the control on statuary room bed master bedroom and also the trophy room to make sure that uh, they won't be able to make those flanks as best as they can and also at the middle of the round they can be able to play some claymores or i would say nomads uh, air jabs to make sure that the push that comes in from the defenders won't be able to get those as best as they can now a great uh, setup being placed on the 90s wall. We're going to be seeing a deployable shield being placed and pendra will be the one to holding that specific hold there I believe it's quite interesting to see a total of four operators being played on the site and uh, actually all five of them are actually playing on the site with none of them roaming which uh, is basically a turtle hold coming in from Instinct Esports. I mean yeah I can actually do understand because the main objective is to make sure that they won't be able to get control as best as they can and looks like uh, Instinct Esports they actually kind of decided you know what since that they're going to arrive on this side why not just play a game of pool or two I mean my favorite is always 8 ball pool not uh, the uh, snooker I, I just uh, it's it's just that I haven't I, like I've played the game on the PC I just haven't you know played it in real life yes yes I'm, I'm that kind of a guy who actually plays pool billiards in the video game rather than playing it in the real life well anyways coming back to the game round 10 north danu is already in the landing zone holding an angle from the avg room Rooney seeing uh, just a lot of minutes being wasted not much of a chaos being going in but maybe we might be able to see it right now no skill taking out the bandage charges currently being situated from the avg room and it's quite interesting to see a deployable shield being recollected from invalid as he tried to reposition it from some place else quite interestingly and looks like the Skyros Palace will be able to make an angle for Prodigy to make sure that he can be able to get those important kills indeed. Bandit sees the Nomad playing on the windows of the study but unfortunately won't be able to get the kill indeed. Mellow with a little bit of decreased HP instead but won't be able to happen just indeed. 20 seconds left, uh, 20 seconds well, left and Instinct that. Esports uh, definitely holding in. Team Waha has, is having a lot of problems in, but looks like Capita will also do the job indeed. Using the smokes and a lot of flame, but definitely the C4 will do the trick. Asterix eliminating no skill with the Capita down. They only have three seconds left as Nexus have to stick the plant in. Asterix comes for the push, but Northern is here for the support. Anaconda comes in and he's going to immediately take it out. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. The push comes in from Instinct Esports. The shotgun from the SAS operator he's going to give the win from instinct esports what a play coming in from them the turtle hold did eventually worked out in the favor of them even though we actually did see the attackers taking a lot of time thinking on whether how to execute on the side and that was basically their main problem they only had 25 seconds left they had to go for the execute capital were actually using his flame bolts and smoke bolts he actually didn't use the smoke bolts he only used the flame bolts instead went for the plantain but he did not expect the smoke with the canisters being used from the vault making sure that he won't be able to place from the default with a Perfect C4 coming in from Asterix, eliminating the default. And just like that, the score is equalized. 5-5 five to five is the score line. As we're going to be progressing to round 11. First floor dining is going to be the site. We're headed down to the dining room right Defenders now in bomb. round 11. As it is 5-5, five to five, uh, equalized between both of these teams. 
And oh boy, this game is slowly but surely heating up more and more. And at this point, I'd like to say, or I'd like to cast conjecture, that overtime is probably an inevitability. I know probably and inevitability don't exactly go together in the same sentence, but at the same time, I can't exactly say that we'll go to overtime because either team could win two Bob rounds back to back Jackson. and completely deny a comeback, uh, a comeback situation. It could be instinct. It could be Team Waha. It could be anyone in, in this round right now, in this match right now. And that's why rounds 11 Jackson, and 12 Jackson, are going to be so, so important for both teams. They fought tooth and nail to get where they are right now and the fight ain't over yet at least for another another couple of rounds asterix is actually playing down below the bandit probably for the c4 actually he's already used up his c4 i'm interested to see where he's replaced it he may have put it on the roof somewhere he may have put it on the floor oh there we hear it somewhere it's around the hallway yeah it's around the hallway probably just below that deployable shield that we see but metal's gonna take down anaconda in the meanwhile the castle is off the board and that's a big one right there as uh, the castle with the ump and the super short he could have been pretty influential even though he's already put down his barricades he won't be influencing this round any farther mellow is already into pantry that's a big push what do you find the body not quite will the body find him first no not at all metal will drop one kurosaki's off the board will he drop another no that's the that's the mp7 from asterix to take him off the board and that's a big one as well but asterix is low on hp there's a year to come back for support but it was only the zofia who was in the pantry region Four versus three. Team Moha are set. They look poised and set to take the match point. However, will they be able to or will Instinct Esports pull off a surprise round victory like they did in the last one? Round 10, mind you. It was Team Moha's unfortunate issue that they took far too long to get to site. And the time that was wasted by Instinct Esports' defenders was brilliantly done. However, round 11 is uh, maybe going to be a different round altogether. Maybe, maybe not. With a couple of bodies lost, with Asterix low on HP, the way the side of... The way the side of Instinct and Moha will be playing this round is going to have to be a little different. That's why we see Panda taking up Prodigy immediately on the board. And that is another big drop. The Hibana's on the board before they could make any sort of a play happen any hard reach any uh utility used and nothing as the jaeger pen drive he's trying to take one more will he find somebody on the pantry says window next is out there he's throwing a flashbang unfortunately bad timing from nexus is gonna get him killed and now it's all down to thunder and no skill in a sudden turn of events where the man count has been swung in favor of instinct esports Shots when you find the IQ knows where this Jaeger is playing, but Pendra is taking some damage from behind him. That may have been the bot, probably was. As shots are going to be fired, but no, Tanu's going to take the kill onto Pendrive. And uh, Tanu's going to take another one onto Invalid, suddenly leaving Asterix the last it's man standing, hiding behind the bomb inside of Dining Room. There's an IQ approaching close. There's also a Buck approaching close. He might be able to find one. Does he see the IQ? No, the IQ sees him. He's on one. He's on two! The swing around comes in from the bandit and from out of nowhere, he finds a couple of heads. What is this madness that we just get to got to witness from this man? How did he connect on those two heads? I have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. The shaky cam kill is in, but that is going to give the side of Instinct Esports round 11 on first floor dining. And that's going to put them up on the match point 6 to 5 as they're going back to trophy and statutory. Well, madness. This is instant esports with some great plays coming in. And I mean, yeah, definitely we actually did see Pendra with those incredible timing coming in from him, eliminating Nomad when, when she was throwing out the flashbang that actually gave him the perfect timing to go for the push and eliminate him. And just like that, instant esports is on match point. Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm just basically trying to control what I'm going Attack to say right now. But just, I just, I just have to say it out loud. Who needs pen drive when you have Asterix, right? You just had to twist that one back on me, didn't you, Baba? Yep. I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 
I mean, actually, I, I was just trying to control it. Or no, I mean, I know it was a kind of like a, a, a bad joke, but instead, I, I just have to say it out loud. You know, each and every time I used to, you know, compliment how great Hendra was playing, and also, I mean, I, I, I just cannot, you know, I just. Asterix is also a, a really great player indeed with those incredible C4s coming in. We actually did see, uh, you know, when they're defending on ABG, uh, when the attackers only had 15 seconds left, Asterix with that perfect C4 to eliminate one of the attackers which made them go for the force plant. And that's how great Instinct Esports is and they've been performing quite well. Not to, you know... Uh, not to be biased about it, uh, even Team Ma has also been performing really quite well, especially Nexus and the Prodigy playing also very well on defense, but looks like Team Instinct Esports winning three rounds on defense uh, is actually giving a lot of problems for Team Moaha. Indeed, round 12 is going to be in play, second third trophy room is going to be on the site, and Instinct Esports is on match point. No skill will be using his uh, scanner to eliminate any... And the charge being placed on the statuary wall to make sure that they won't be able to have any problems dealing with them. As Asterix, he's going to be playing on the red stairs, holding flanks, making sure that the attackers, if they try to push him from the stairs, he can be able to get one of these important kills. But keep that in mind, if Asterix goes out, the C4 play will be denied, making them, making the attackers free to plant on the side without having any problems dealing on the bottom floor. Now... We're going to be seeing Prodigy opening up the walls and I believe that is Melo using the impact to open up lines of sight for her but also it also works you know quite the opposite indeed. Melo is going to be using her second concussive. No, it is actually an impact nade just to make sure that there isn't any you know bandit tricking being uh, currently being played on the side of Instinct Esports but sad to say that Asterix is in the roaming duty with the C4 play. So that will be very important indeed unless and until if Team Waha doesn't be careful about that specific import operator. This might cause a lot of problems in them indeed. Impact trick is going to come out indeed, only giving them lines of sight, but not access to the site. Another uh, Hibana's pellet will be there to make sure that it will get it. And I believe uh, maybe there might be a way to get in. Looks like the party's already started from both the teams as Melo and Asterix. Both of them get a proper kill. Melo's going to get another one, eliminating Asterix, which would make the score count, I would say, the man count equalize. And with that, it's just going to be a matter of minutes to see how well the execution will come in. And looks like Melo is going to find another one, eliminating Kurosaki. Gets him a triple kill. Will we be able to see another ace coming in from Melo? Yes, we actually did see Kurosaki with the dog making the ace. But anything can happen on a game of C. We still have Anaconda with those Evil Eye Cams. One single push is enough for Zofia to get beamed from the Evil Eye Cam and suddenly get eliminated. But the only problem is the timing and the timing is that anaconda is holding on the astronomy window it's going to be a matter of time the ping comes in will he be able to get this kill only time will tell opens up the cam opens up the match to evil eye cam and looks like melo is actually going to get a quad kill and just like i said it anaconda with the beam plays and with that, he has to clutch this one out on a 1v2 situation here. No skill going for the plant as Anaconda slowly creeping in from the astronomy room. They have the perfect intel knowing that there is one specific operator playing on the side of astronomy. But does he know where he is currently right now? He's currently playing on the bathroom side, hoping for a push. There is a Hibana's rotation hole being made, but it is too late indeed. Not Danu and no skill playing on a very far location with IQ playing also very low on the dining room going to be a matter of time to see how it's going to be turning out the pings comes in maestro is waiting for the opportunity to go for it well he's just waiting for the confirmation to go in the pink comes in as he uses the led scanner to eliminate it. a lot of flashbangs being thrown out it's just going to be a waiting game and just like that team Moaha will secure the round eliminating anaconda on round 12 and just like that the score is equalized and with that, we're going to be seeing round 13, a very impressive place coming in from both the teams as we're going to be proceeding to overtime. Well, Jack, I was about to say something, but you take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to rumble? Overtime is in play. And uh, that is indeed round 13 that we're getting to see right now. Second floor aviator is going to be the site of a choice. And it didn't look like the side of Moha were going to be able to do it. But they have equalized and gone to overtime. Giving themselves a second attempt at winning this match. As, of course, the same stands for Instinct Esports. Same thing, they'll be a little gutted that they couldn't make that round happen. 
but unfortunately for them, they were outplayed by a certain Zofia. With all of that out of the way, the first overtime round is underway, and now the first to eight will be the one to win the match. The first to eight rounds, the first to the eight round score, the first to the eight ball is going to be the one to win it all. And uh, Villa is, uh, could not have asked for a better, as in we could not have asked for a better, better grounds, a better showdown ground than uh, the map of Villa. Beautifully made, aesthetically pleasing, at least in my eyes, and a map that we get to see so many times, uh, deservedly so, a map that is very well done from the side of Ubisoft themselves. We have a standard hold coming out on AVG as well. Nothing too special from the side of Instinct Esports. They're not going to be doing the extended roam hold on to the site of the second floor office. Instead, they're going to reinforce all of those walls. And Akande, he's got one more reinforcement to use and he will use that just to get rid of some utility and to make sure that there's enough cover for his teammates at Instinct Esports to make this defensive play happen. Action phase is underway, of course, and Team Moha, they're in the map, they're here, they're looking for these kills, and they're looking for them with as much aggression as they can bring in, as is uh, advisable, so to speak, you know, un un until the point it starts to get foolish, you know. You don't want to get too aggressive, and unless that aggression is coordinated aggression, it's not going to work out, not at least as well as you'd hope. And in the meanwhile, he's going to wait for the calls from Nexus that it is clear. And it is, in fact, clear to us out of uh, Trophy, Statutory, and Astronomy. As the nearest defender to them is probably around 90 hallway. Yeah, it looks like Instant Esports are just messing around inside a site. You can see Asterix very intently on his cameras on top of the pool table. While there's a Valkyrie and the Jaeger were probably sharing a conversation. Jaeger, in the meanwhile, has gone back to watching the 90 hallway. As there's Invalid watching the <clears throat> Trophy room. Excuse me, uh, the study room. Kurosaki might go out to peak 90 hallway. No, not quite. He's just, he's just rotating around from the pool table with the bandit and then coming back as soon as he can. There you go. Look at him. They're just enjoying a chill chill session. No, not quite. Messing around with the pool table has uh, come to an end for the bandit because he now needs to jump into action because Moha have gotten awfully close to sight in that brief intermission. Shots are being fired by Danu as a no skill. Excuse me, Mello, the Zofi, as we, is the one firing shots. As no skill, he's going to be looking to make a peek happen. There's the Hibana getting into sight, at least making a line of sight into Aviator with those Kairos pellets. Shots are fired. Mello's going to take the first kill onto Invalid. A big drop as that is the Wumai of the board. He could have been pretty useful. He already has been pretty useful, but it's only one more, uh, probably one more of those. <clears throat> excuse me, right there. One more of those were my magnets that he had in his pocket that will no longer be good. Flashbangs are coming in as well as Asterix is trying to make sure, clear out a little bit of a C4 throw for himself. He's going to have the Valkyrie for, uh, for help in that situation. However, Moaha are very close to getting into sight. Danu, he's just waiting for the gas to dissipate and it will dissipate as the lifelines are going to come out and there we go. The plan is coming out from Danu as well. The gas gas need to come in. The C4 needs to come in deeper. Will, will it find him? No, it won't. It's been shot out. Asterix like finds one and there's the Ash trying to run away being found by Asterix and now suddenly it's a 4 versus 3. Instinct Esports are in the lead. It's a 4 versus 2 and Pinter takes another one and he takes another one. Prodigy goes down and suddenly he's out the Nexus in a 1v everyone. And he will go down as well. Instinct Esports are going to be the ones to win round 13 as the first overtime round goes to the side of the defense as they will now go into the attraction attack excuse me transition into round 14 as it is 76 overtime match point. Well, that was a wonderful hold coming in on the side of Instant Esports. Pen drive making those plays, playing as the Jaeger, eliminating two and three important kills. And how can I not forget about Asterix? And quite a lot of mistakes also being made from the Ash as well. I believe uh, that was um, 
that was not dhanu even though he actually did went in for the plant it did not actually worked out and when he actually went, went back to go and hold a proper location asterix was there to immediately eliminate him out round 14 will be in play match point overtime match point is in favor of instinct esports as round 40 as we're going to be commencing round 14 instinct esports will be on attack the site is going to be on second floor trophy room this is def this is definitely going to be interesting and what's more interesting is we're not going to be seeing a Bomai and a Jaeger combo being heavily also favorable with that deployable shield on the closet but it's just uh, Prodigy he's going to be playing all by himself with three of the ADSs being placed I mean yes uh, with Jaeger holding, yes, it can work out. You still have, I mean, it would have been better if you had a, 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 an Ella combo with an F412 shotgun or a Wamai with the AUG in which you can be able to hold Five both, of the, to both of the angles on walking closet as well as on the bedroom. But uh, let's see how it's going to be working out. As we're going to be seeing a deployable shield being placed on the front of the walking closet, but at the entrance of uh, the walking closet, which would give them a lot of cover for the Jaeger to not be able to worry on the bathroom hold. Now, Keeping that in mind, Instinct Esports is on match time. All they need to do is win this attack on second floor trophy room. And looks like their execute on attack will definitely be the on the study room through dropped. to the landing. And it's going to be a moment of time where the execution will uh, about to happen here. For a moment, I actually thought the Prodigy will be playing on the side of walking closet, but the, it will be Mellow with the Valkyrie, with a lot of intel being, uh, you know, used on the side of outside of the bedroom roof. We'll be able to get great amount of intel, but sad to say that none of the attackers are going to be pushing in from the roof. We're going to be seeing Astros with the heavy aggressive push. Will he be able to see the Jaeger being played also oh, very close? If he just pushed in a little bit early. The Jaeger would have caught the life of the Ash. Push comes in from the Sophia. We'll be able to go for the drone. We'll be able to detect where exactly Jaeger's location is as the push comes in. Melo actually finds one. That is Anaconda down. That is important operator indeed because the diffuser is down indeed. But looks like the frag also comes in immediately as the Blackbird will be able to eliminate Melo. They are definitely not wasting any time at all. Bips the pistol. Grave mistake as Prodigy will claim the life of the Ash. You still need to be careful that there is one more operator. That is Kurosaki playing also very close. He has the capital boots. He can be able to force the Jaeger to get out, but he needs to be careful of the other angles as well from the statuary room. Uh, C4 is being placed, won't be able to connect anyone as the man count is still in the favor of Team Moha Jaeger. Actually, misses the opportunity and a lot of bodies being dropping down. At this time, it is in Team Moha's favor. Three. And, and with that, Kurosaki is the only operator remaining left and he needs to figure this one out. He's all by himself. He needs to find three players. The diffuser is down on the outside of bedroom roof and he only has 55 seconds left. We'll be able to find that wall bang as Kurosaki eliminates not Danu, but at what cost? He needs to find two more. One playing also very close on the bedroom and I believe one last one playing on side of astronomy. A push comes in, a prepare, which would immediately give the location on Nexus, but looks like no skill. He's going to be He's going to be waiting out very patiently. All uh, Mute has to do is wait for that perfect, uh, uh, you know, ping to come in as Kurosaki will be uh, pushing in from the trophy room as he only has 30 seconds left. Instinct Esports need to win this one out or else round 15 will be in play. He needs to make this play happen as Bush immediately comes in. We'll be able to get detected from the default cam on Astronomy giving out the location. And with that, he only has 15 seconds left. We'll be able to eliminate Nexus but at what cost? There is no skill playing also very attackers below. All he has to do is wait for the attackers to go Five for the plant but he needs to know at exactly where position he's going to be on. Two seconds, one second, zero. Will he be able to plant it? Yes, he can but the ping immediately comes in as no skills just pushes in to the shotgun and immediately eliminates him eliminates him down and just like that no skill with the patient play as team Moha will win their defense on second floor trophy room which indeed as we are going to be progressing to the final round of the match a deciding match to see whether instinct Ma is to see whether instinct esports is going to win or does team Moha loses it out Round 15, maximum overtime is in play, ladies and gentlemen. And oh boy, what a match we've had indeed. Very last second clutches, absolute insane 
the clutches, and of course, some brilliant rounds and outplays coming in from both Team Waha. And Instinct Esports says now it is the final round. There is no more rounds after this. There are no more rounds after this. There are no more chances. It's now or never between both of these teams. A second floor trophy is going to be the site of the showdown yeah, between Instinct Esports and the team of Moaha, a showdown that we are all here to see, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that we are all here to enjoy and that we have been enjoying for this entire time. It's been a long match, but a fun one. And at the end of the day, it's about to come to an end. As Instinct Esports and Team Moaha, this is probably going to be the last time we're seeing them in the league itself. This is the last time we're seeing them in the league itself. And we will, of course, be moving into two more very, very exciting games in just a quick minute. However, of course, just like I said, it ain't over. Not just yet. Not by a long shot. As, um, excuse me, right, right after this game, we've got E-Samurai Esports versus Batrid Esports. And then there's Havocs versus Team Area 69-2. Very exciting games coming up on our screens uh, very shortly, but you know, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to make it sound like this match has already ended. It has not. We are on maximum overtime, but I want to make sure that all of our viewers know what's coming right after. Drones are coming out from the side of Team Moha on the attack as they are now going to make their plays. Uh, they're now going to ma make sure that they get in to the building unharmed and they get into sight unharmed. On instinct, on the defense, on trophy, need to step things up. They did not look quite great in the last round. Again, they did look pretty good in the early round. And the mid late round was not their place. Uh, not, their, uh, not their playing grounds, not at all. A little bit of hot potato with the diffuser right there between Team Ma. They just keep dropping it and then they keep picking it back up. As now it's with no skill and he's got to hold on to that for the time being. Four attackers are down below. One is outside the building while Danu is on the astronomy window droning for himself. As the Evil Eye is finally able to cast it on. It took a quick second for the Evil Eye to be able to do that. However, he did as uh, we're just slowly going past the time. Just slowly passing away the time that is. We've got a minute 30 remaining for the side of Moa to make this play happen. Hibana makes her way into the walking closet. Make sure it's clear, but it, it it's not exactly clear. Painter is playing on the bedroom door, but he can't exactly make that push happen because the Hibana is watching that exact push area. Prodigy has support from no skill. Both of them are in the main master bedroom. And now a heartbeat should come in any second. Now he's going to be working on that as he's got cover from cover confirmation from the IQ, who just needs to hold down on that right mouse button, the aim button that is. But an impact tree comes out that's going to stop the bottom from making the breach complete. And unfortunately, that little lower slit might not work out, but Anaconda is going to take the top instead. An impact trick out Hibana's exothermic, uh, excuse me, ex, uh, her Excyros pellets, and that's a big one. Prodigy has been denied, but more than that, Moha has been denied entrance. Kurosaki is going to pick down Melo as well. That's another huge kill as the Sophia will go down, but the Doctor will be refragged onto by the Prodigy. There was still a slight slip opened by the Hibana 6 cars, but it's just that little bit that Anaconda could not get. That's what ends up giving him the kill. Ash makes a push into Astronomy Room, known as the is trying to take out all the kills, but will he be able to? No, there's a Maestro Evil Eye, but somehow that, that kill is not yet confirmed as he will go down instead, as bodies are being dropped, but the Hibana is going to be refracted onto instantly, and then Valor and Pedro take a couple, but there's the IQ to refract onto the Jaeger instantly. One versus two is all down to Invalid, and no skill, as Dhanu is bleeding out on the floor, and no skill doesn't have time. Will he be able to find the kill? No, he does not! Right at the last! Second, he was just unable to get the shots off, and the timer can be cruel, ladies and gentlemen. But Instinct Esports are your victors here on the map of Villa. And after a very, very grueling game, they will end the league at a victory 8 to 7. And what a match! Indeed, what a match that we just had, as uh, that is going to be the last we see of Instinct Esports and Team Moi in today's match set and the match set for the entirety of the WD Black, the Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege. 
And with all of that being said, we are going to have to call it for this stream and we'll be right back in just a quick while with the second one with of course the matches that i mentioned not only a second ago that is of course e samurai versus bad trip esports and havocs versus team area 69 a couple of very exciting games coming in as we'll be taking a quick break before we come back with that stay tuned 